Alright everybody, today we're doing another Netflix roulette. It's been a hot second. Let's spin and see what we get. We have four services set up. Disney Plus, HBO Max, Prime Video, and Tubi. So we don't even have Netflix, so it shouldn't be called Netflix Roulette, but whatever. That's what the series is called. Uh, so movies and TV, let's, uh, let's spin the wheel. Wait, hold on. Bank Alarm from 1937. Looks like a Poverty Row film. <laughs> a federal <laughs> agent is. learns that the gangsters he's been investigating has song? kidnapped his sister. Amazon Prime, baby. Bank Alarm on Amazon Prime. Alright everybody, for the first time in a long time, we have gone back to our famous series, Netflix Roulette, a series where we talk about a series of films <laughs> that is randomly picked from our streaming services. The first film we rolled was Bank Alarm. Bank Alarm is about a guy and a girl who follow the clues of a bank robbers and it's a poverty row film so it's 60 minutes a merciful yet still incredibly long 60 minutes from 1940 from 1937 something. it has no action all the action is told through classic newspaper montages Yep. Anytime there's action, it just shows a newspaper fall on a table that describes the action right. that they didn't film. And it's a bunch of people standing there talking about robberies and shit <coughs> for 60 minutes, which felt like three hours. So, Aiden, what did you think of the Poverty Row masterpiece by the director of Reefer Madness? The bank alarm. Was it the director? Of it, was the director it was the of director Reefer of Madness. Reefer Madness. Yeah, yeah. It was boring. It's horrible. Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness is, is really boring. We should just watch Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness is very boring. We can do a video uh, on Reefer Madness, but it's so, a fucking boring movie. I'm bank thinking alarm. the musical. Bank alarm, bank alarm. Um, what do I think? It's very, very, very dull. It's a, it's a very old movie, and it's a very cheap movie. There's maybe five or six sets, and they stick a bunch of actors on it. One of them's a cop, one of them's a lady. Uh, there's like a cop guy, prison guard, and like the two robbers. Two hobo robbers. <clears throat> um, and people just talk in rooms. It's, it's very boring. Nothing really goes on. They, they'll get to a place and then they'll be like the robbers robbed the bank and they're really violent and bad and we need to stop them and the girl's like oh my I, I'm on such a love you're such a lovely detective mister and then the bank robbers like fucking escape from the jail and but we don't see that and we don't see them do the robbery it just cuts to the newspaper it's so fucking dull the merciful 60 minutes felt like hours. It just drags on and on. There's really nothing to it. Um, the one sentence plot summary on Wikipedia basically tells you all you need to know. Um, I'd pretty much given up on the movie, like 15 minutes in, and just... Yeah, it's, it's really fucking... It is a... 1930s low budget movie. Connor, now Grant, what did you think of Bank Alarm? <laughs> what did you think, bud? I thought yeah. the the rape scene was really inspired um, for a 1930s film, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the part where he he smacks the woman top for talking to. Him. Let me try that again. And the part where he smacks the woman for talking too much, I, I thought that was Oscar worthy. I think we all did, right? Yeah? Yeah. Put that bitch in her place. It was so a better this, time. <laughs> so this episode of Netflix Roulette should be called the Rape Episode. Put it up here and never 
Never it flukes through that. Never get rid of it. The rape we'll, episode. Just we'll, we'll, call it, we'll call it Netflix Roulette. The, the unmonetizable episode. episode. And then we'll put a bunch of copyright music in. May as well. Might as well. I'll put, <laughs> I'll put gangster rap on. made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> <Max> <laughs> <volume>. <laughs> the, lost, the Lost Wolverine review. I unprivated that. Because I think it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> I like how we didn't notice for like eight months, and then Wolfie commented and he, like eight months later for some reason and said I can't hear the video. So Connor, what are your thoughts don't you on you Don't you show me that look. Connor, what are your thoughts on Bank Alarm? I thought Bank Alarm was fucking boring. Um, statically shot, 1930s, schlock. I mean... Poverty Row is a interesting like studio thing. Like you got your Ed Woods, you got your fucking you got you got some shit in there that actually stands out as interesting in a bad way usually. And some people took Poverty Row and actually made some inspired movies. There aren't many of them, but <laughs> but there are some. <clears throat> This is not one of them. This is like the most like cookie cutter. We have got four thousand dollars to shoot this movie. We have six actors. We have three sets, and we just need to fight to get to that sixty-minute time limit. And that's what they did. They they got to sixty minutes by having a bunch of people talk about bank robberies for an hour. Um. I do, I do think the history of Poverty Row is interesting. Uh, there, there's some interesting things done there. And it, it is kind of like... The equivalent would be like those Liam Neeson movies today. <laughs> yeah. Probably. I mean, there's no like real exact one-for-one one equivalent of Poverty Row these days. Or I guess the like... Cheap Bruce Willis movies. DTV like Bruce Willis would be the equivalent, maybe. In a way. But this is basically, imagine a DTV Bruce Willis movie made in the 1930s when it actually costed a lot of money to make a good movie. Or like, you know, it took a lot of budget to do things like buy Bruce stock. Willis holding a gun, buy film stock. And it was designed to waste time at a drive-in before the good movie started. Yep. Okay. And yeah. so it has an interesting history behind it. It's by a director who made Reefer Madness, which is an interesting bad movie. But admittedly, this is not worth your, your time of day. What up, YouTube? YouTube! It's Custom Girl 420 here. We're going to roll for another film. Oh lord. Uh, Choir Girl. Choir Girl is a gritty drama about a lonely photographer, Eugene, who becomes obsessed with an underage prostitute. Oh lord. Okay, well. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna talk about this one without getting demonetized. Prime video. Oh! Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, just click stream it. Oh, thank god. Wait. Uh Click stream, go up to. This is a brutal. Go back to real, real good quick. Click stream it. Tubi. Fucking Tubi. That's where they get you. Hi, baby. It's directed by the guy who made The Mummy Returns? No, it's not. Why is it recommending me? Oh, because Brendan Fraser. Okay, well. Uh, choir girl on Tubi. Speaking of not worth your time of day, Aiden, what was our second film? Choir Girl is a movie where if I say literally anything about it, our channel will get deleted. Susan um, is knocking on your door right now. Uh, let's see. What is Choir Girl? There's a photographer who takes pictures of an underage prostitute and then he decides he's gonna save her from her pimp and then 
it doesn't work out because his lady who is gonna use the pictures of a child having sex to make money at an art gallery trolls him into thinking that she the prostitute hates him but she loves him and they love each other and then he heroically rapes her so that himself. he Jesus. heroically he heroically rapes a child and gets arrested so that she can be freed and then she comes and visits him in jail with a love letter or something um also it's an australian movie uh, so it's inherently hilarious. <clears throat> so, kind of, uh, Grant, what did you think of Choir Girl, the half that you saw? Uh, I came in like 40, 35 minutes into the film, so I was a little lost at first, but uh, I'm surprised you forgot that it's all in black and white. <laughs> it is true. Fairly relevant. Well, I bring it up because they're trying so hard to be artsy fartsy with like the subject matter and the black and white filters and the cuck scene, the famous cuck scene, which is probably on Fandango clips right now on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the Fandango clip. Fandango clips channel. <laughs> choir, gets choir girl clip three of ten. Eugene gets cut. <laughs> I, I think it was trying way too hard to be like super serious and it it's edgy it, it's really edgy it's it's got it's like yeah I, I was bored we're, through most of it we're supposed to find our character like heroic by sacrificing <clears throat> himself by raping a child yeah and that just that just don't fly uh that didn't fly so good. The movie itself is kind of boring. It drags. Uh, there's a few scenes that go on way too long, like when he goes and speaks with what's her face, whose name I don't remember, um, at the office. The whole publisher trying to turn the girl on him, or trying to make it look like who fucking knows what's going on. She's being an ass. It's it's weird. She edits the videotape to make it look like she hates him or something. Yeah, and, and he doesn't notice all the jump cuts. I also don't get how him, you know, I don't raping either. a child or got the, the crime tons boss of people, arrested. Tons of people already raped that child. So there's no need for him to do it to like, how, how did him in specific doing it frame the boss in a bad way when they already had tons of photographic evidence that I don't many know. other people have done Photographic it. evidence that they published in a magazine? It's weird. Also, like, a lot of the pictures are, like, very, like, sexualized. At first it's about him, like, taking pictures of the horrors of what's around him. But then he, like, makes out with a child. And I think the director finds Eugene to be a heroic character. I don't know what the director I don't know what the director ever. thinks, but... Especially with the end where they like, where she like realizes she's free now because of Eugene and like comes up and like hugs him because he raped her so hard that she was free of being a prostitute. Jesus Christ. Well, uh, what the fuck else You're right. the director You're right. think? You're right. What the fuck were they thinking? It was really weird and unsettling weird. and. The point of the film is to be unsettling, but it fails horrendously at it's everything not, it tries to do. It's not unsettling in, like, it's the edgy. way that movies that are very similar to this one are, like Taxi, Taxi Driver. Driver and Lolita. And you know? Nymphomaniac, uh, part uh, one and two. It, it's, it's not a... Her main character is not made out to be a, a bad guy, which is weird. Yeah, it handles heavy subject matter, but it does it with very little class, understanding, thought. or thought. Yeah, <laughs> thought. It's, it's overall just kind of a mess of a movie. It's weird. And yeah. It's weird to sit there. Aiden, would you recommend also, it? Also, on that note, if 
he wasn't, if the director wasn't trying to, like, sexualize the rape scenes, why did he shoot them the way he did? Why did he yeah. linger on them the way he did? The last one, I guess you could give the argument that it's supposed to be uncomfortable, but the cut, but Eugene, but, uh, but, uh, fucking the choir girl scene three, three of ten, cuck, Eugene gets cucked. Like, we see Eugene's and pr propose, you know, probably the director's, like, sexual fetishization of this character who's supposed to be 15. And it's just fucking weird, man. It's a very uncomfortable movie. It probably doesn't deserve to exist. I think the director's intention was that art has no boundaries and... I don't know about that. Eugene is brave for taking photos of this underage girl. I don't know if that was the point. I'm not really positive what the point was. Because if the art has no boundaries thing was the point, then there'd be more focus on, like, the artful aspect of capturing the horror of the world. Yeah. Which isn't the case, because most of it is just people talking about rescuing a child prostitute by raping her. The nice thing is, they didn't, you know, this movie seemingly has not won any awards. And didn't play at festivals and shit, so... What I will say is, at the very least, hidden gem. At least people didn't fall for their bullshit. Hidden gem. <laughs> I'm glad that only 30 people have logged this on Letterboxd, but all of the reviews are super ass kissy and like trying to like analyze this fucking turd when it, all it is is a weird child rape movie. Friends of the director. It's weird. Trying to leave reviews and be like, oh, I really liked it. It's a very strange movie. It's weird. It's like Taxi Driver, but really fucking bad. It's also boring. It's, it's also boring. It's not entertaining. Nothing really happens. A good portion of the movie is just people arguing about why they should be allowed to fuck children. Just even the poster is like... Even the poster for the movie is really like a sexualized image of this uh, child character. Which... It's the Netflix's weird. cuties, but hidden gem version. And more morally devious. Yeah. So, Grant, <laughs> you said earlier you would recommend this one. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I would not. I course. wouldn't. I don't know what the fuck you're thinking. God damn it. Recommending this one. The hair I, on don't, YouTube. I don't. If anyone's it. channel should be deleted for this video discussion of. Grant loves Choir Girl. Okay. No, I don't. Grant or custom I saw Connor Choir order, Girl. I saw Grant ordering the Blu-ray while we were watching it. He went to Amazon and he's like, Blu-ray. Oh, he Christ. bought seven copies. I would be interested in reaching out to the directors. Because on IMDb, like, <laughs> smaller directors and shit, you can usually just reach to, out directly to their agent, which would probably be directly to this man's Gmail account. <laughs> I'd be interested in having him on for an interview and just asking him straight up, are you a pedophile? <laughs> like, what, what's your game here, bro? I like how the other movie he made is, like, some weird Christian movie, too. From, like, 2014. What was the other movie? I don't remember what it's called. I was looking at his IMDb. He made this, and he made some Christian movie called, like, Dingle's Crossing or something. And the Dingle's IMDb Crossing. thing is, like, a man and a woman try yeah. to... A man and a woman try to reach heaven or something. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. I don't fucking know. Why, hi. It's Grant Newkirk, who was here the whole time. Why were you guys watching a movie about a man obsessed with an underage prostitute? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Stop it. No. Grant, Boom you mic in the movie? shot. Boom mic in the shot. So I'm here to spin and save the night from you guys' horrible decisions. Uh, are we all set up here? Yeah, all you have to do is press the spin again button. Ooh, oh, Jacko. Okay, we're spinning. Blue Rose, oh! What is this? Oh, it's a, t it's a TV show, it's short. It's short. 
Season 1, crime drama, 2013. Uh, when office temp Jane discovers that Rose, the PA she is replacing, died under mysterious... Sur Five minutes later. Uh, no more TV shows. It's not happening. Okay. Well. Uh, you rolling? Yeah, it's rolling. You can... All right, we're, we're, uh, it's me, special guest, Grant. Grant, hi, what's up? We're here to roll another... Should spin. I hit you at the Dutch angle? <laughs> Let's Pull get a fattiest the Dutch Jackson. angle? The Duchess angle? All right, we're, we're going to spin spin the wheel and watch a third movie for the night and not a TV show. Grant, yeah. what did you think of our first movie? Uh, yeah. What did you think of the first movie of the night? I thought it was... Insert opinion here. Okay. All right, we're spinning. Give it to me. Give it to me, good daddy. P pin Pinsky. 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 Um, <laughs> one hour, twelve minutes, comedy. <laughs> Sophia Pinsky seems like a functioning adult, but when she loses her girlfriend and her grandfather the same day, dot dot dot. No, no. <laughs> wait. Roll press again. watch now. Let's see what this is on. What's it on? It's on Amazon Prime Video. Now you have to click stream it stream. over there. Let me point with the boom mic. The Roku channel as well. To be, to be, to be. I think we have to watch Pinsky. Okay, I guess we're watching Pinsky. What, what could possibly we go need a wrong? Hook for this episode, roll again. <laughs> <laughs> we need a but hook. she loses her grandfather and her girlfriend, girlfriend in the same no day. Movie. She's a lesbian, Connor. All That's right, a hook. Yeah. That we have pedophiles, lesbians, and no, drug roll dealers. It again, like, roll it again, like, uh, <laughs> pretend that you, uh... Oops, I slipped. Slip again. Pulse. When the computer hacker friend accidentally channels a mysterious wireless signal, a group of co-eds rally to stop the <laughs> terrifying... They fight wow. a Wi-Fi ghost. Okay, And I it was made in this. 2006. I want to see this now. One hour, 30 minutes. Horror mystery. Mysterious Wi-Fi ghost from 2006. When the That's a hook. Ghosts, pedophiles, and whatever the fucking Christ happened in the Ooh, first movie. HBO Max. Ooh. You gotta sign in, though. 2001. I said it was from 2004. Yeah, wait, what the fuck? I don't think this is gonna be in English. It's two, two hours. Wait a minute. Oh, I have HBO Max on the Xbox. I yeah, now it's in two hours. Cough and spin again. Cough like you, uh... <laughs> the lovely ears. A William. modern take on William Shakespeare's... <clears throat> uh, whoops. The Sorcerer's Apprentice. <laughs> a ball, ball flowers are. Yep, this is a Disney movie. He's a master sorcerer in modern-day Manhattan trying to defend the city. From his arch nemesis. This is a Disney, Oops. real Disney movie. Ninja, Ninja Champion. Champion. Fuck yeah. 3.4. Yeah. This is the type of movie. Come on. Wife is beaten and raped. Yeah. <laughs> the theme of the night is rape. The theme of the night, man. Streaming it on Tubi. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, Go I'm back. pretty sure it said free no ads on YouTube. Go to, Go back wait. to rent by. Go to rent by. Rent by. No price data. Uh, no price data. Uh, click it. <coughs> oh yeah. Because it's free, motherfucker. <laughs> Let's go. Speaking of rape, Grant, <laughs> what was our final film? Uh, what was the name? It was like the the Ninja, Ninja Champion. Champion. The Ninja Champion uh, is about a woman. Perhaps the worst name ever made. It's yeah. It's not really a relevant name. But it's about a woman who. Oh god. Oh god. We're down to that. We're down. We're down to the natural light. The walls are closing in. All right. Anyways. So the plot is a woman gets raped by three men, and then, um, well, basically she goes on a revenge mission to kill them all, and then she goes on a revenge mission to kill them all, and then, toward the middle, she or toward the beginning, I guess, she meets with her former husband, and he's like, "I'll help you," and she's like, "No, I have to do it by myself." And then a bunch of shenanigans happen. She dies halfway through, well, like two thirds through, and then it turns out she had a twin sister, and the twin sister finished all the revenge murder, and the former husband and the twin sister share a moment to grieve and. 
there's also a side plot that was completely shoehorned in and not relevant at all about ninjas fighting each other. Yeah, there's like three white ninjas and a red ninja and they go against each other. And that's and it. Just, the movie just cuts to it sometimes, but it doesn't have any bearing on the plot. Yes. Like they're not characters from the movie. It just sometimes cuts to <laughs> the footage of these ninjas fighting and then it cuts back to the movie. For the context, it's boring. this film is by Godfrey Ho, classic filmmaker who would just buy up films and then splice in a bunch of random ninja shit to make it hit runtime. So this movie was like an unfinished rape revenge movie from Hong Kong. From Hong Kong. And then Godfrey Ho is like, we need white people and we need ninjas to sell this to white people. Yeah, pretty much. So then he gets a bunch of white people to fight in ninja costumes. I think some of the ninja footage I think might have been spliced from a second movie. And then there was original shit shot with the white guy, who's in like three scenes. But he's on the cover, he's on the poster. Right. And the ninja's front and center on the poster even though they're in the movie for ten minutes. Yeah. And not relevant. Um, it's just a... Uh, Rape revenge exploitation movie for the most part. Yeah. Um, I like the part where she kills the man with her nipple. <coughs> I thought that was very tasteful. Yeah, the part where she's squeezing diamonds out of her nipples or whatever happens at the start. It's really weird with the weird 70s censorship to make the movie sellable. They do say they fuck at one point, like, though. Say rape a lot. Yeah, they talk around the, the rape part, a fucking lot. The part where they're in the car, and he's like, oh, okay. "If you put on more rape uh, makeup, I might rape you again." Yeah. Oh my gosh, this something. fucking movie was something else, man. I like the the fight scene with the car guy is the best part of the movie too. When he grabs a lead pipe out of his car and just starts swinging it at his own car, she doesn't even really dodge. She just kind of keeps missing, <laughs> and then he. Like, stabs him in the eye with her shoe and he gets scratches all over his face. It's pretty fun. The ninja fights are kind of funnish too at first, but then like you just start to get annoyed whenever it cuts to the ninja stuff mm -hmm. that's not relevant. And most of the like actual movie isn't very fun. There's a lot of Asian lady and her husband like talking about how it sucks that she got raped and then she'll go to a hotel and she'll meet one of the guys who raped her and feed him poison and then stab him like three times and then go to the next one after another 20 minutes of talking and a random ninja fight insert. It's, it's odd. It's barely coherent. The dubbing is awful and hilarious. Right. Very, um... It's a lot less rapey than the previous movie, I suppose, but those have the second most rape tonight. Got a lot of rape movies. We got a lot of rape movies. Yeah, this one at least had some classy fight scenes to make up for it. Yeah. Uh, bizarre editing. Bizarre. <laughs> yeah. You know, everything. I like the white guy when he appears. He's just like, I'm an Interpol agent just like you. I you liked both the stuff. Godfrey Ho fighting <laughs> stuff as well as the purchased footage fighting stuff. Like, there was some fun fights in this movie. It was usually over the top and campy, but it was creative and fun at the same time. Uh, it got my martial arts itch out for the day. Right. And it was a hell of a lot more entertaining than the other two movies we watched today. I'll give it that. Yeah, it uh, it was mostly not boring. There's no going down for Choir Girl and <laughs> yeah, Choir Girl basically. And bank Alarm is pretty shit ass too. Those are those are pretty easy titles to beat, but this was pretty alright too. Hi Jacko. Hi Jacko. Uh yeah, it was it was pretty alright. Um, not amazing, but kind of a fun weird little product of its time in the 70s where you could just buy Hong Kong movies and cut them together in no like logical way and slap it out with a ninja poster and people would buy it. Yep. 
a, a better time, really. Those were the days. Yeah. Is there anything else we can really talk about? Besides there isn't time to watch the fourth movie. No. <laughs> movie number four is going to be... Come Pow. We need to find another movie with rape in it to match the theme. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, Our girl favorite. with the dragon tattoo. We really, like, went down a rabbit hole today. Over it. Fellas. Yeah. <laughs> a rape it hole. We went down the rape it hole. <laughs> uh, uh, man, this is, I don't... That's We're gonna have to self censor this one. This one's not going in as all ages friendly. Every time yeah. we say rape, you gotta bleep it with like a scene from the movie of them getting raped. That'd be even worse. <laughs> That'd be yeah. funny. I don't worse. think we can show footage, most of the footage from Choir Girls. Just blur it. Just put a big little gauge and blur. Mm, that's true. You can always just do that. Yeah, we saw some movies by lunatics today. Yeah. We and saw... <laughs> that is the lunatic special. Two two lunatics made rape movies, and some guy was paid $300 to make a movie where a bunch of guys stand around in a jail set and talk about robbers that we never see. Well, it is by the fucking crazy man that made Reefer Madness, so it really is three lunatics. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose so. The trifecta of lunatics. Just one of the movies happened to be boring as fuck. Well, two of the movies happened to be <laughs> boring as fuck, but one just happened to be nothing but boring as fuck. Although the tasteful thing about, <laughs> about Bank Alarm is that there was no <laughs> no rape, so so that was kind of a highlight of Bank Alarm. Yeah, that was a good uh, good thing. Jeez. We got the zero rape count, we got the one rape count, we have a very high rape count. No, she only got raped the one time. Well, debatably it, twice. No, I mean, she got raped. statutory raped like a thousand times before you even got here. No, the, the ninja guy. Oh, in the rape, ninja in the champion. final movie, Ninja Champion only had one rape. Yeah, Ninja yeah. Champion had one rape. Yeah. Choir Girl had a lot of fucking rape. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye! Bye. Bye.